Hi guys, this is Ecat, and today I'm teaching you a few ways how you can twirl a deck of playing cards. Now, twirls are really cool because you can use these as transition moves if you're doing cardistry, and I'm teaching you five twirls, and if you stay tuned till the end, there's going to be a bonus one, which is sort of like a twirl, but at the same time a false cut, and can be utilized for your magic. For magicians, I think it's really cool to add some flair to your routines and it's okay to show a little bit of dexterity. Grab your foxes. If you don't have a deck of fox playing cards, right now is 20% off. Every time I release a video, I drop a few quantities. So go grab yourself some foxes and let's get started. What I'll do is I'll go with the ones that I think are easiest and then go to more advanced versions of the twirl. So the first one is going to be an aerial twirl or sort of like a toss. Now it's super windy here, so I'm a little bit less daring, but that is what it should look like. The first grip is this, right? So that's, that's mechanics grip, and then you have a pivot point. And the pivot point is going to be this bone of your finger contacting. And so normally when you just twirl a deck, you are using these bones. So from your right hand is this one, and then Again, you can hear it, it's the bone that's, so you're twirling in between and then your fingers just wrap around. So that's, that's the grip that's going, going to be like quite important for the first moves. So when I'm doing the aerial move, what's happening is, is that I'm modifying the grip a little bit and I'll show you from this angle, where instead of just, you know, being comfortable and doing this, you're, you're actually gonna use your middle and the deck will be rotating on that middle finger and you're just gonna let go and catch and your catching hand will look like this. Okay, hold it like this. And that's gonna be the awkward grip. So you're removing the index in this case and here you're not going to have anything in contact and you're just rotating downwards and all the deck will do a rotation like this. If you have enough momentum, you could get to a pretty good 360. Okay, again, I'm a little bit more conservative because of the wind, but when I'm initiating that rotation, when I reach here, this is where I'm, I'm like hooking the deck with the middle finger and giving it a bit more force. And the idea for me is as I'm catching also, uh, I don't want to move the left hand. I just want movement in my right hand and I want my right hand to do this and come on top like this. So I don't know how I can illustrate kind of the last minute momentum that I'm giving it. You know, if there's toys that you wind by like removing something. So it's, it's sort of the same principle. At the very end, I'm giving a little bit more of a push and it gives you this rotation. Here's the difference with the second one I want to teach you. So let's say you're in mechanics grip and now you're again in, in our twirling grip that I described earlier. And here you're really going to use that knuckle and you're going to go ahead and twirl upwards. Okay, that was not a good demonstration. You're going to go upwards, up. And this, this sort of squares the cards, okay? So, but it's not, good to initiate it if the cards are not squared to begin with actually because you see at the end you do have cards that move a little bit. Now some folks do this twirl and just do it at like without moving their hands upwards and it's just an isolated twirl like this but I prefer because for me that's like a transition move so I prefer to go up so my hands don't stay here they travel up as I twirl the cards. So I can show you if I do it with the faces and from this angle, I guess I'll have to show you like this. My deck is a bit bent because of the humidity here, but you get the idea and I'm traveling up. And this is amazing as a twirl because it allows you to get into fanning afterwards or anything really. Say you are working here and you want to do a display which needs to happen higher you simply twirl up 
and then you do whatever display you need, maybe utilizing your chin or whatnot. It's a OG twirl actually, very, very old, back with the XCM days. So typically used to get yourself into a fan position, to be honest with you. So from here and then fan. And a little disclaimer, if your fingers are not able to extend and hold the deck like this, then you won't be able to perform this. I have a lot of a stretch here, okay? It's very painful and even like I keep my fingers open without even bending them because I can't really stay in this position for very long. That's why you see mine sometimes, like it's a, it doesn't keep the, the deck squared and the reason why is because I'm not 100% gripping it this way. So what happens is that you're going to twist it's so hard to explain, slowly. So as you approach your, your right hand, you're going to twist these fingers. So they're normally like this. You bring your palm up and your middle interacts with the closest to you edge and your index goes to the other side and you're just going to twirl like this, okay? And you're using this bone as a pivot point and so that's, that's what happens. So I don't know, I'm gonna try it on a different plane for you to understand, or even maybe from the front so you understand. So I'm coming here and see, I'm lowering the deck into my left hand. I'm opening all the fingers so there's no, nothing that could hit it. And then I grip and I use here the middle to square. <laughs> I promise you easier, here we go. That's the, that's the twirl. So you're simply twirling this, and this is cool. I don't have a table here, but this is cool to just put on the table. So imagine this right hand is the table. You're, you can just do it one-handed. So I'm gonna call this, well, I don't, it already has a name, it's a, it's a deck twirl, but let's say this is a one-handed deck twirl, okay? To differentiate. Or the third twirl you're learning. In this video. So from here, uh, you're simply rotating, rotating everything and you're here. And stick around at the end, I'll show you a little combo that I do that includes a false cut. This could be an infinity twirl in the sense that you could twirl uh, infinitely. It's a cool twirl to get into um, arm spreads. You can check out my arm spreads tutorial. Um, I don't like to do it continuously, this one because I usually utilize it in magic. And so it's just for me like a, a quick transition, either like if I just want to turn my body or if I want to place it on the table. So that's when I use the one-handed twirl here. But super, super easy. If we go ahead and, and cover the, the basic grips, you are here, mechanics grip, and you're simply going to remove your, your thumb and you're going to grip things with, uh, your fingertips and it's going to be deepened into that grip and then from here what you're going to do is, is simply rotate your your palm and as you rotate your palm your left thumb is going to raise um, the cards and and rotate them so they are face down so from here to here now I do want you to see what's happening with with my elbow here and I hope you can see this I'm I'm doing this, okay? So there's a little bit of an elbow. From here, as you go, you can put it either on a surface, like a table, or receive it into your other hand. And from this hand, you could notice that you're in the same position to do this again in your right hand. So you have to learn this twirl in both hands, and then you'll be able to keep contact. See, I'm, I'm not necessarily here, see? I'm not losing contact, so I'm not like this. I'm trying to keep this very tiny in terms of move. And when I do this very tiny into both hands, you don't see any movement actually when I'm trying to keep it a small movement. So you barely see my elbows move in this scenario. So I think it looks cool continuous as a rolling twirl. 
but I personally think it's an overkill and it's really maybe for like a cardistry routine, but even then, like to me it's meant, and I mentioned this before, just like a body turn. Just, I want to turn to this side, I, I might do that. And if I want to go up, I use this one and um, I just want to toss the cards, I use that one. It's, it's good to have a few in your repertoire and then you just use it whenever you feel like it. building on the twirl that we just learned and it's it's my creation it's taught on the pure project my first cardistry project and it's two-handed it's a two-handed deck twirl so instead of just going ahead with one hand I'm cutting out um, this deck into two two packets and then I'm utilizing here my fingers to pivot the cards and here um, you get something a little bit more complex. Since you already know the one-handed twirl, this will be a walk in the park. The main difference is here. You see how it's contacting my fingertips at the base. In order to perform the two-handed one, one packet will have to be at the very edge of the fingers. And here's what I mean. So you go from the elevated cradle grip like this. This means cards don't fall. You're going to cut in half. All right just about half, it could be a little bit less than half. It doesn't really matter so you're comfortable to cut. This is a, the beginning of a Charlier cut, by the way. <laughs> so you go that, to do that, and then you bring your thumb closer here so that you could do that same motion. But see how I'm operating this packet at the very tip of your fingers? And there you can feed that packet, and here you have no choice, you need your other hand. It's a two-handed twirl, so you need the other hand. And here, once you fed that packet, you need to rotate this one, right? To be ready to, to put it back. So this hand does exactly the same motion as previously with the one-handed one, but this one is going to clip it. So to clip it, you're going to have your ring finger go underneath and you need to practice getting there fairly quickly. So that's what's going to happen. You're going to give yourself space to put it. And then, watch, it's going to twirl in between the fingers and now you're back. And you can do this as a rolling twirl. Um, some angles I felt you couldn't see from that side. So you're cutting at the fingertips. So you see already I'm feeding my hand face up. I'm actually keeping a bit of contact until the very end. I, I'm i going to twirl and as I twirl, see when the packet is, when my hand is still face down, I get into that grip and when I'm turning face up, this is when it opens. And I think it just feels right. You know, you'll feel, it's, it's a very satisfying <laughs> to do with your fingers because it, ju it just feels like it flows so from here and then you open up and watch I'm just applying pressure it's clipped now just between the ring and the pinky and I'm applying pressure up with the ring and down with the middle and it's going to um, twist it a little bit and that little bit of twist is just enough for me to position myself to be in contact and here, see, I'm leaving my thumb. I'm already with the ring finger in the clipping position. Yeah, so I told you this is going to be a little bit more difficult. But doable. And I do think it's easy and it's that's definitely going to elevate your cardistry from the other twirls because it has that extra level of complexity and I think overall if you get into it and you get it really smooth then you can practice with the speed so you can go slow you can speed up and be a little bit faster and it's like playing the piano at this point you you get to to play with with the rhythm I realized something fun as I was filming the b-roll with the two-handed twirl 
if you perform it two times, you are performing a false shuffle. So I wanted to point that out as I guess another bonus. But look, you have the seven of hearts here, you have the five of clubs here. And if I do it once, then no, but if I just do it a second time, then everything is back to normal and you have a complete retention of the order of the deck. So if you wanted to do this as a full cut, just remember to do it two times, just like I did here. So it's very casual. Let's say you want it to go from this side to that side as you're talking. Yeah, I should use this one more often for my magic. I've, yeah, there we go. Seven and five. Getting a bit lost in my own videos. So that was number four, right? So we've done, we, we've done the, the toss, the toss twirl where I told you try not to move your left hand. And here I'm battling wind again. And then there was, I don't know how we're gonna call this one. Let's say upwards twirl or number two. <laughs> then the regular one-handed twirl. And then number four was the two-handed twirl. And now we are reaching a point where we're going back to the flourishing XCM days. And this is a good, O OG one as well. So old school, I don't know, I'm just gonna call it twirl number five for reference, but this reminds me of, of a windmill. I'm not sure exactly. It's just a twirl, okay guys, it's a twirl. So you start here, so you're not mirroring yet. So that's your grip, like I discussed. You're gonna raise cards up, so half goes up. And that you're holding it like this so far. So your pinky is a little bit useless, but you're holding things like that. And from here, you're going to remove some fingers and, and now you're mirrored. Yes, yes, now you're mirrored. So that's the grip in both hands. So you're going to, to go down with the packet with the right hand. And as you go down with that packet, you're gonna lift the other one, but you have to pivot that packet in between your middle and thumb. And the other fingers are used to, to square. It's super difficult to go slow and gravity is working against you. And now we can hear humans in the background, which is my family that I'm hiking with today. But as they are continuing their hike, I'm just stopping here in the middle to film this for you guys. So yeah, I think a good slow motion of this is gonna help. I don't know how to explain this pivot very well. But as I separate and I go up, I know the pivot is in between the middle and thumb and I know the index here helps that pivot and I'm like at the edge and I know when I reach here, I can use the index to square back and then I'm pushing here up and then I, I need to square back and then I'm pushing and it's super difficult to do slowly. And my hands are, or my fingers are traveling a lot up and down the edges to do this. Now, since it's a mirrored twirl, it's no matter what angle I guess I'm showing you, we're, we're getting to a very similar result. So up, push, I'm shifting. The thing that's not comfortable is as you're pivoting up, as you're pivoting up like this, it's beveling. And then you have to square it in order to maintain, maintain in business. But that actually extra squaring, that bevel is what helps you push that packet. So I'm not actually like moving my hands up and down. It's that squaring action, the fact that I'm pushing with my index, that's pushing the packet up. That's, that's actually, I guess, a better explanation. So, yeah, it's using that momentum. And if, it's a difficult one. I put it in last because it's a difficult one. If you want a challenge, that's definitely a challenge. Is it useful, really? Does it do anything? Does it help you position or, or move your body? No, it doesn't do anything other than, you know, it's a flourish. I consider this a deck twirl, okay? Any time that I'm doing this action, I'm twirling a packet 
left. So to me, this is also a way I can uh, move my body. Okay, I'm here, I can go here. And that is completely false. When I do this, it's completely false. And I utilize this twirl when actually I've done something magic related. It's face up and I need to go face down and even maybe place the cards on the table like this. So that's when I would do this twirl. So I'm here, I am swing cutting, letting that packet fall and then I'm twirling the cards by just doing this and dropping, all right? So from here, I'm swing cutting, swing cut is simply taking, while well, you're gripping things like this, you cut up and you move that packet to the side. That packet is now here and you're able to use uh, this packet to, to make it fall. A lot of wind. You know, it's hot and humid, but windy in this, in this area. <laughs> so you're here, okay? And then you twirl back like this. So you're here and because you're already in this position, your index helps you and your elbow goes down and your palm goes towards up and then you're like this. So you see there was a king of spades, there was an eight of clubs and there's still gonna be a king of spades and the eight of clubs. So I use this false cut or, or twirling motion when I want to go from face down to face up or I've done something I don't know, magic related, you pick the card, whatever, I've controlled it to the top maybe. And then I go like this and I put it on the table. I hope you get a use out of these twirls. They're really, really fun.